so I'll usually put a half hitch in my climbing line. Just gives me something to kind of set the hitchhiker on while I'm tying the knot. Um, I start out with the pin um, just in about this position. It doesn't have to be all the way out. It's just it's just like that, so it kind of stays stays in place. It's not the way I climb around or walk around with it. If I'm going to walk around with it and stuff like that, I'll put it all the way through. This, the swing arm, lives on my bridge. I don't, I don't take that off my bridge unless I'm changing it out for something. And we have this keeper on here so that if you do, and I'll show you when we take it off to do a redirect, if you do, it, it keeps you from dropping the pin. Anyway, so to get that pin to move, all you have to do is turn it a little bit. And when you turn it, it disengages the plungers that are in there. So, um, for example, to completely remove the pin, I'll push a plunger. I'll push the plunger in. It's easier probably to demonstrate on the rope. Push the plunger in again, and then I just give it a part turn. And now it's kind of in this open configuration, but it doesn't drop out. So I'll walk up and I'll put that on the rope. And I'll push the pins all the way through. You can see easily see that both plungers have come through. And now the top of the slick pin is sitting pretty much on the top of on this uh, slick pin keeper. And so it makes it really visually very easy to see. If you didn't have it all the way in, that's what you'd be looking at. And I hope that would be very obvious to people. So that gets slipped all the way in. Then I take the dog bone and I'll put that through and just position it in about that spot. Notice the hitch cord is behind my climbing line. So that comes behind and wraps around in front and then pulls down. Notice I'll pull it down a little bit and now it's, the whole thing is kind of sitting on top of the body. This pulls back in front and now I'm ready to start my wraps going up the rope. So I'll do six wraps. It depends on your weight and of course on the different hitch cords and stuff. But I find with my weight and with this hitch cord, I need about six wraps to keep it from creeping. So there's one, two, three, four, five six now at this moment i can take and i can snug that up a little bit if i want because it's all going to stretch out once you get it tied on now i take this end and we treat this end so that it's easy to push through the um, hole of the dog bone and it's also quite stiff so that it wouldn't have a tendency to want to back out through that to that knot now i'm going to put it through and give it a pull and for my weight and what I look for is I put some tension on this in other words I snug that up a little bit because all this is going to stretch out now I tie my stevedore knot and a stevedore knot starts with an underhand uh, loop like this and now I go up over the top once come back around notice that this is working up towards the dog bone so it keeps everything nice and snug then this stiffened end goes back up through the hole and gets snugged up and I take that slip knot out and now everything again is very clearly visible you can see that the pins are connected that the knots are tied correctly and now I'll take it and I'll weight it and I'll put all my weight on it and I'll make sure that it's holding myself snug and I might do that once or twice just to see how it feels and even um, right now it's tending very well and I know I could trust that 
Of course, with a hybrid device, you can tie whatever friction hitch you like, whatever you find um, is your favorite. I will say that the Hitchhiker has a little different form factor than some other hybrid devices. So be aware of that. If you're trying out a hitch, do it low and slow. Um, make sure it works. But the Hitchhiker is a hitch-based system, just like a Blake's hitch is a hitch-based system. And you need to be familiar with tying hitches. Um, there's one variation. Um, this is what we call the innovation hitch. And the one time I would, the, the time I guess what I'm saying is to use it is um, maybe you're a little bit newer at hitches and you want to make sure that that hitch is always going to engage. There's spring tension in this hitch with the way you wrap it and the, the right amount of tension on here. You can put twists, you can do some things, but, but this is going to contain that spring tension that will initiate the engagement for the hitch. Um, now the innovation hitch, because it's got more tension up at the top of the hitch, will tend to engage a little quicker than other hitches will. It does have a tendency to start to um, get tight and um, a, doesn't tend quite as well. But because the wraps, as I'll show you, are up at the top, it's a little bit easier to open it up and, and um, make it a little bit easier to use. So it starts out, you just it's like just doing wraps going up the top. So there's, I'll do one, two, three, four wraps. So that's just like a, a regular, regular wraps going up the rope. Now, once I get to this, I'm gonna do what I call a distal tuck. When I come up here, I just tuck it up underneath there. All right, so there's one. And then I'm gonna do it one more time. And then that puts those crosses right up on the top like that. And then again, I'll do the same thing I do with all the other hitches. I'll do my stevedore, a little bit snugged up, just once. Notice I use this in uh, my middle finger, <laughs> my little finger right there. And that helps me when, I, when I'm wrapping this, I'll pull it around this way and that middle finger kind of keeps it in place until I can grab it again. And then when I grab it again, it just, it keeps it all oriented. It just makes it really easy. Comes back up to the back side, ties off, snug that up. And again, I'm ready to sit down on that. Now notice um, right there, it'll, it'll kind of take its comfortable position but this because the wraps are up the top tends to get all of that friction started and and pulling but like I said if you go up and down on this a bunch pretty soon this will start to get kind of tight but because it's all up here at the top and not buried down here in the hitch it's pretty easy to open it up and put a little bit of um, Put a little slack in there but it does engage well so that's just another option here's another tip as well sometimes when you're climbing you may not want this tail sticking out here i have a little more tail with this hitch than i do with the other hitches it's really nice you can take that tail and just put it up around a climbing line so now it's it's really out of the way again my pin everything is really easy to see so that is what we call the innovation hitch but you're not limited to any hitch you tie the hitch that you know works okay so this is the procedure i follow when i'm ready to walk up the rope i use a rope walking system 
So I'm going to take some of the slack out of my hitch. And the first thing I'll do is put on my foot ascender. Once my foot ascender is on, I'll put on my tending device. Now I have a lightweight tending device that goes over my shoulder. It's in a V shape. It doesn't come across my chest. I, I like to keep this as clear as possible so that nothing can snag on my multi sender. So once I get that, I'm ready to basically take a small step and then I sit back down on my hitch. Now, when I do this, I'm checking that my leg straps are connected, my belt strap is connected, and then visually I'll look at my bridge, I'll look at my hitchhiker, I'll look at the knot, and then I'll look up at the anchor. It's just kind of a nice little flow to make sure everything is, is the way I like it. And although this is lightweight, it's not real comfortable in the neck, it's not bad. I could, you know, keeps me from whatever. Um, I wouldn't want to sit here all day, but you know, it's pretty comfortable. So now I'm ready while I'm doing this. I'll take out my foldable socket. Take out whatever knee ascender or whatever you have. And I put my knee ascender on the rope. And now I'm ready to stand up and walk up the rope. If I had forgotten to make any of these connections, it would be very obvious to me. If my leg strap was not connected, my leg would be falling out of here. If my belt wasn't on, I, I would feel that. Um, it just, you know, this is kind of my pre-flight inspection. Um, you could do a checklist if you wanted. You can make it a verbal thing if you want. But I think it's important to set things up, take a moment, just take a good look before you start walking up the rope. Because it's possible to walk up the rope and not have any of these things connected properly. And you wouldn't find out until you sat back or took your foot ascender off or something. That's not the time.